Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 survival horror game series and in today's video we are going to be continuing on with our system whereby the player can walk up to the doors and unlock it with a key. So for those of you that haven't watched the last video I definitely advise you go ahead and check it out just so you can stay up to date with where we are and exactly you know and have the same sort of code as what we have. But in terms of what we're going to be doing today we are pretty much going to be setting up some more of the back end stuff for the door. So having Having said that, we're going to be checking to see whether or not the player has the key in the inventory. We're going to be creating a variable for that so the engine can actually know, you know, whether or not the player has the key. And we're also going to be changing some objectives based on whether or not the player has the key. For example, when the player has lit the fire and everything, I'm going to get it to skip to the, you know, uh, skip to the objective for unlock the door instead of going to find the key because if he's already found found the key you know it just doesn't work too too great so i just want to make things a little bit more dynamic in terms of the objectives and i'm also if we get time i'm going to be creating a pop-up for when the player has no key so if the player tries to go walk up to the door it will you know have a little ui pop-up saying you know please find the key something like that but anyway without further ado let's go ahead and dive straight into this so the first thing i'm going to do then is I'm going to go ahead and create a variable um, for you know whether or not the player has the key and because this is just going to be simply a true or false variable I am just going to create this as a boolean so I'm going to put this into my third person character blueprint because you know we can sort of access it from there really really easily so as soon as my third person character is loaded up we will go ahead and create that so variables and I'm just going to go and add a variable and I'm going to call this has key for now and make sure the variable type over here is set to boolean don't worry about the rest for now but make sure you go ahead and compile it cool that is fine and just give it a second one two three my computer's awfully slow this morning i think it's just it's still half asleep but in the meantime because i'm too lazy to edit this out feel free to just go ahead and share the video like the video spread the word and you know just sort of sh share the love really um Give it a moment, and God, man, this is this is this is something else this morning. Okay, there you are. Okay, so next thing that we need to do then, we need to set that variable to true when the player picks up the key. So for that, we're going to have to go into the key inventory pickup blueprint, and just at the end here where we got destroy actor, we just need to cast to the third person character, and just make sure that we set that variable to true. So go ahead and do that. For the object, just go ahead and set it to get player character. Once we've done that, we need to get a reference to, you know, has key, and we're just going to type in set has key, and then we're just going to make sure this is checked to make it true. So now that should, you know, when he picks up the key, it will return true. I'm also going to quickly print a string just to double check that this is all working for when the player actually picks up the key. So I'm just going to go ahead and chuck that in. And I'm going to compile that and I will go ahead and press play as well. And I'm going to run up to the key just to test to see whether or not this variable is changing exactly how we need it to. So just give that a second to get going. There we are. We are in our scene and I'm going to go ahead and run up to the key and see what happens. So as soon as I run over the key it should just say true in the top left hand corner. Okay, so for whatever reason that didn't seem to work. I think I might have maybe just missed the the little print string, but I'll have a look anyway So running over it true. Yep, it's all working. That's fine So the next thing that we need to do then is we just need to delete the print string because we're not really gonna need that And that is pretty much all we need to do inside of the key inventory item blueprint. So That bit's done next thing that we need to do. We also need to make sure that our inventory system is changing has key back to zero once he actually discards the item because if you remember earlier on in the video we set it up so you could press control and you could drop an item on the floor just like that and you know the player is going to be chucking the key out of the inventory pretty much so we need to set that some kind of system up for that so what i'm going to do is once again i'm going to go into my survival hud widget as it's all going to be in there Give it a second to load up and we are just going to go ahead and find the click events. So if I go to graph and I'm going to try and find the blueprints for all of this. So let's have a look what happens. 
So, unclicked, if it's one, if it's two, okay. So basically what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to have to create these unclicked events for all of this, di all of these different inventory buttons. At the moment I've only got one and two, so we're going to pretty much have to copy and paste that over uh, later on. But for now I'm just going to add it to these two, just so we can get the basic functionality going. So, there you are, uh, okay, so number two so zero is empty that was perfectly fine number one was for the wood and number two is for the key so basically how this script works what we're going to be doing here is basically we've got our own on clicked event and it's going to go into this little switch on in integer node and this is pretty much telling it exactly what to do based on the invent uh, the item that you have in your inventory zero is nothing one is the wood and as such you know you spawn the actor for the wood you cast it to the third person character and you remove the number of wood from, you know, there. So what we need to do, we need to do pretty much the same thing. We need to spawn the actor for the key. We need to cast to the third person character and then we need to remove it from the slot. And we also need to, sorry, and we also need to, what do we need to do? Set has key to false. So go ahead and do that. So number two, just drag it out just like this and just go ahead and type in spawn actor from class and this will allow us to put a blueprint class in here for us that's just going to be the key this time so go ahead and just type in key inventory pickup that's working fine in terms of the in terms of the transformation stuff we are pretty much just going to copy exactly what we've got down here as well so just go ahead and copy this so i'm just going to drag this in Actually, you know what, I'm just going to hook it up just like that and that will work for us perfectly fine. And the next thing that I need to do now then is I need to cast to the third person character again. And from here I need to go ahead and hook this up. And I'm going to move this to the middle as well. And with this, what we need to do then is we need to set has key and we are pretty much just going to set that to false so that will get rid of it from our inventory for us so hook that up and lastly we need to set the slot one item back to zero because they're discarding it just like we did here so go ahead and do that so I'm just going to hook this up just like that just copy it over because it's, it's essentially the same functionality as the wood and make sure we hook the target up just like that and I am going to do one more print string just to make sure that it, that it has actually been removed from my inventory. And I am going to just type in you no longer longer have the key. Okay. Let's go ahead and press play and try and pick up the key and then discard it and see what happens. So I am going to run over to my key. So it should be true now, that's fine. And if I press control. If I go ahead and click it, it says you no longer have the key, it's out of my inventory and hopefully when I can start moving along it's going to be sort of just floating there waiting for me. And that is working perfectly fine for now. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to dive into my level blueprint and pretty much just check to see whether or not the player has the key because we don't want the player to just be able to walk to the door and it opens all the time. So once again we are going to go into our level blueprint. From here, we've got a few bits and bobs to do, because at the moment we're just playing it. What we need to do is we need to cast to the third person character as per usual. And we just need to run a little check to see whether or not the variable for has key is true. So we're hooking up cast to third person character to a branch. And then from here, we are just going to get as third person character get has key. And there we are, we're going to hook that up just like that. As for true, so if the player does have the key, it's going to open the door, and that's working fine. If he doesn't, we are going to do pretty much nothing. We are going to keep it locked. We will be creating a UI pop-up in the next video. So, you know, we're going to create a UMG widget where, you know, it's got some nice text on the screen that will say, go find the key, and maybe a little icon for the key as well. I'm not too sure just yet, though. So, for now that's just fine. Next thing that I want to set up is the objective stuff. So, once the player actually has opened the door, I want the objective to change to enter the horror mansion or something like that. So, we've pretty much just got to go ahead and copy our script from, you know, the objective 2. 
or objective one, whichever one, and then just sort of change around the values. So we are just copying and pasting all of this. And there you are. So I'm going to copy that, close this, and go back into my level blueprint. Give it a second to load. There you are. And I am going to hook this all up just like this. And there you are. So cast your third person character. I'm just going to go ahead and chuck get player character in there. And then once again, we just have to play around with all the values for what we actually want the objective to be. So having said that, player objective, set this to anything you like. For me, this is going to be enter the horror mansion. And then we've got to go ahead and do the same thing for all the instances of our save game script here. So enter the horror mansion. That's one and one more. This time I'm just going to copy and paste that. Just chuck it in there. Perfectly fine. So let's go ahead and give that a go. I'm going to go and collect the key and I'm going to see whether or not it will change the objective for us. So I'm going to go and get the key just over here. And I'm going to run up to the door and see if it opens and see if it, you know, changes the objective. So, here you are. Door opens and it says enter the horror mansion. That is working pretty good if I don't say so myself. So, the, the next thing that I want to do is I want to make some changes to the, you know, the fire level blueprint. What I want to do with that is, like I said before, I want to tell it to tell the player to collect the key if the player doesn't have the key in their inventory already and if they do have the inventory in it if they do have the key in the inventory already it's going to tell you to go and unlock the door so let's go ahead and do that so once again it's all going to be in my level blueprint i'm going to open that up and i'm going to scroll down and i'm going to find the code for my fire system and what we're going to do with the fire system once it's been lit we are pretty much going to run a check to see whether or not the has key variable is set to true so just give that a second to load up well not load up but it's auto saving which is an absolute nightmare might i say but give that a moment doesn't help that my computer is running incredibly slow this morning either okay 17 percent 23 percent I could also make a quick little shameless plug here as well. You know, I could tell you all to subscribe to my channel. That would be great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Almost there. 60%. Come on. Chop, chop. Here you are. Cool. So, scroll down here and find my fire blueprint stuff. From here, pretty much what I need to do at the end of all of this is I need to set, you know, check to see whether or not the player has the key. So, just before all this same save game stuff where we've got the objective being set here, we need to, you know, check to see whether or not the player has the key. And then we'll just do a, sec a separate objective setting for find the key. So, you know, that sounds pretty reasonable. So we've got the find the key stuff over here. So we just need to make another instance of this, which will say, you know, unlock the door. So we need to go just before this and all the way back here. And this is sort of where it starts. So number of word is true, that's fine. Okay, cool. So what I need to do is I need to do another one of these. No, I don't. Yes, I do. Okay, so number of word is true, that's fine. Okay, so they ha if they have set it off, then we need to do this. So cast to third person character. And from here, no, nope, we've already got one of those. What am I doing? So from here, we need to do this. So branch, and we're going to try and move this across just a little bit. And this branch is just going to check to see whether or not the player has the key. So we need to get as third person character has key and hook it up into the condition there. So when it's true, it's going to tell you to, you know, unlock the door. If it's false, it's going to tell you to collect the key. So we've got to make sure this is set up the right way around as well. So false is going into here. Make sure you break the link for true. Just press control and click on it to do that. And there you are. So false should be on that. And then true, we should have pretty much another instance of this. So I'm just going to go and copy all of this. 
there is a much more efficient way of doing this script. Um, you know, I could have just joined up the end bits. Instead, I'm just going to copy and paste it over twice. It's nice and easy to do it. So I'm going to control C, control V to copy and paste that. And I am going to move this along. There you are, and I'm just going to place it just about here. Here you are, and I'm just going to pretty much hook this up to true just like that. And once again, instead of doing collect the hexagon key, because the player has got it already, I am going to set it to unlock the door. Or unlock the mansion. And once again, I've got to go ahead and change all of these for uh, all of these. So unlock the mansion and one more time and that should hopefully have it all working for us and one last time we are going to go ahead and test all of this and see whether or not it's working okay so it says it's some kind of error so let's go ahead and see what's going on here. So target equals self. We just need to hook that up and this should have it all working for us. So press compile. That's fine. If we press play, let's go and see exactly what happens. So we've got our collect firewood uh, objective up in the top. That's fine. And I'm going to collect some more firewood. So I'm going to run over to this wood. That's fine. And I'm going to grab that piece of wood, objective complete, that's fine. I'm also going to pick up the key as well, so that's in my inventory. And hopefully when I light this fire now, it should just say unlock the mansion. So it's a little bit laggy, but there you are, it says unlock the mansion instead of collect the key. And that is working great. That is pretty much everything that I wanted to go over in this video. I know it's been quite a long one, and I know we've done a lot of scripting and stuff like that. So just slow it down if you didn't get anything. Feel free to ask for any help that you might need in the description, and we will do our best to help you out. We are a community together. And that's sort of where we work, how we work. So, thanks for watching. Make sure you comment, like, and subscribe, of course. Share the video, share the love, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.